Hi, and welcome back. Hopefully we're going to get this thing squared away and get it going for you. Um, this is kind of a merger of stoichiometry three and four. You are so close to getting caught up. As soon as I do this percent composition problem, you can work on that worksheet. Um, I'm going to fly through those notes as well and do that contemporaneously. We did, did that at a separate day in class. We let them just work on it. We worked on this yesterday, 11-9, on Monday. This is day three of a stoichiometry. We worked on it. Day four is what we're going to kind of dive in today, which is explaining more and do more practice on empirical formula. So, um, you know, I'll show you those slides as well. So good, so easy. I may not in this video get to post it today, but um, empirical formula coming soon, that practice coming soon. So first, without further ado, let's go to the percent composition problem. It's so straightforward. I don't know that I want to stand up for it. Uh, and do it on the board. It's, it's so straightforward. Percent composition is you do the molar mass like you normally would. Add it up like you normally would. Fe2, O3. Each Fe is 55.9. There's two of them. Each oxygen is 16. There's three of them. Multiply, add them straight up. It's 159.7. That's not new. The percent composition part is where you take the part that is Fe and divide it over the whole the part that is oxygen and divided over the whole so that we get the percent composition of each part. Part that is Fe is percent, comp, uh, percent Fe, part over whole, percent oxygen, part over whole, 48 over 159.7, that's part that is oxygen over the whole. Whole thing is part over whole, part over whole, part over whole. And what we find out from this percent composition is that the entire formula, <clears throat> the whole compound Fe2 over 3 is the, is, uh, the percent composition every time. So replay that if you need to. Go back and, and watch that again. Ultimately, it's just part over whole, the part that is Fe, the mass that is Fe. And if we're doing this calculation of molar mass the way we've, we've been learning it, the way I taught you earlier, um, you just stack them up and add them up. <clears throat> it's easier to see. You, you're, first of all, you're solving molar mass for the compound, but it's easier to see <clears throat> those parts divided by the whole when you see the parts and the whole individually. Notice I'm not doing 55.9 over the whole. I'm doing how much 55.9? Two whole 55.9 units. Add it up. It's the whole amount, all of the mass that is iron over the total. <clears throat> that gives us our percent. Now, of course, to make it a percent, you have to multiply times 100, which is just moving the decimal twice. If you did 111.7 over 159.7, you'd get 0.699. Move the decimal 69.9. Try the percent composition worksheet. It has two other varieties to it. That's it. Um, let me show it to you right now. Let's see. There's two other varieties to it. You have uh, number one, two, three. It gives you the masses. You don't do the molar mass for it. It gives you the mass for magnesium, gives it for nitrogen. Total them up. Part magnesium over whole, part nitrogen over whole. Student, please report to Number four, five, six, seven, eight are all just similar to what the one we just looked at, the Fe2 over 3 problem. And then number 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, use those same formulas. Oops, change from me for me. Um, use the same formulas from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it asks, okay, based on that formula and its percent composition, what's the mass of one of the components, in this case hydrogen, in a whole 350? So I find the percent that is hydrogen. Turns out percent hydrogen was 20% back in problem number four. And that percent, 20% hydrogen is of C2H6. I have 350 grams of it. So I do 20% times 350. Now, of course, when you do the math of a percent, when you do percent of something, you don't do 20 times 350. Move the decimal back to get a decimal. You have to move the decimal in a percent back in order to get the decimal you actually want. Decimal does the work of a percent. Percent just represents what a decimal or fraction is. Does that make sense? Send me your questions. Let me know. That should get you to a good point. I might try to go ahead and upload this because this is going to get you through class um, or I'll add on to it and give you the empirical formula. Good work. Go dogs. Let's go. Which brings us to the do now from Monday. You can take a look at it. Pause right now. Solve it and it'll be ready to go because here comes the key. I checked MMP number three as mentioned in these two problems.
50 grams given, put in the upper left. Asks for moles. Grams on the bottom to cancel. Molar mass next to grams, one mole, times one over 12, 4.2. Moles of C. Two and a half moles given. Gotta find the molar mass. Two and a half moles given, MgCl2. Convert to grams. Molar mass next to grams. One mole times divide. You get the mass. And you're in grams. We did some more practice in class, so try this one on your own as well. grams in the upper left, H2SO4, 2 moles, divided by the molar mass, molar mass ends up being 98.1, so 198 upper left, times 1 mole, divided by the molar mass, you get 2.02. .02. Three sig figs, so it's good to go. Next problem, call, pause and go back, or go back and pause if you need to rework that one. How many grams? So it's asking, let me make sure my microphone's on, yep. So it gives you 1.8 moles, upper left. times grams, or the molar mass, divide by one mole of MgOH2. So 1.8 times the molar mass. It's 58.3 is the molar mass. You get 104.94, but you need two sig figs. So you do a scientific notation, 1.0 times 10 to the 2 like that. Oh, got to change my blurriness. Looks like that. Now 1.0 both count, times 10 to the 2 does not count as a sig fig. But I have to round to only the second digit place, which is the tens, and it needs to be 100, so that's why it's times 2. Alright, let's go back to the slides. Then we did some problems from the percent composition. Um, but we kind of we already looked at that on this video. So this is what we looked at here. So this first one, number one here, uh, I mentioned this. You, it gives you the mass 9.03 and 3.48. You got to add them up, get the total. So it'd be 9.03. over the total, which is 12.51. That's how you do that style problem, 12.51. And you get the percent. Of course, that's going to be a decimal, so you have to move the decimal twice to make that decimal fraction be an actual percent, because percents are representations of decimals. Anyway, so this ends up being um, like 70-something, 70 78 77%, 78%, this ends up being 20 22-ish, um, and that's that problem. Then the other style was just like the one we did with the iron 3 oxide. You just calculate the mass the way we would for the molar mass, part carbon divided by the whole. And the last part is you use the percents from earlier to get this. So hydrogen was 20% from number 4. And the total mass they give you is 350, so I want to use percent hydrogen times 350, which would be 0.2, because 0.2 is the decimal of the 20%, times 350, and then that would be my, um, oops, that would be the number of grams 
is hydrogen in that mass, 70 grams. So you'd say 70 GH would be the answer. 70 G of H. And you use your percents all the way through. Now one common mistake here is that on number 13, the mass, the hydrogen percentage you get, you pull from number eight. It ends up being like a single digit percent, 3.8 percent. And students like to say, okay, 3.8 percent, or yeah, 3.8 percent is 0.38. It's 0.38 as a decimal, incorrect. 0.38 is 38 percent. So you wanna say 3.8 percent needs to be um, 0 0.038. That's the decimal for 3.8 percent. So make sure you are aware of that and you are careful with your percents. So that brings us back to through the slides. Pause and finish the percent composition worksheet at this point, and that'll get you caught up through the end of class, on, or middle of class on Monday, 11-9, day, day three of stoichiometry. Gets you caught up through halfway of day three, and you'll be good to go. Send me your pictures, questions, let me know. I rehash what percent composition slides are about. So go back through the slides, make sure you understand what's happening. I'll give you two parts in the whole. Ask you to find the percents. Walk back through the slides yourself or watch this video with it, you know, with the audio off to get these slides. These ones I just I had extra, but we didn't need to use them. Then I had students convert these molecules, but we did more practice on the video here than we did in class. So um, I just asked some follow-up questions about molecules to moles, molecules to moles from molecules. So I divide by Avogadro's number. This one is um, atoms. So I count the number of atoms in the compound. Nitrogen is one. Four hydrogens makes five. Oxygen hydrogen makes seven atoms in the compound, NH4OH. Seven. So if there are seven atoms in one compound and I have this number of molecules, seven times the, that number, and that's your answer. We also did some scientific notation, just re rehash of the rules. And then the question of mass, as you convert the mole answer from two parts ago times the, the molar mass of NH4OH, just like you would in a T-chart. Just plug in the moles from the earlier question times mass over moles. The mass would be the molar mass, and you get it. Then we get into empirical formula, and what I, I instructed on that it is the opposite of percent composition. It is the undoing of percent composition. So two big features about that is that um, empirical uh, we undo what we do in percent composition. So in percent composition, we take our chemical formula, we multiply the subscript times the molar mass of each element, get a total or a part total, add them all up, get the all the way total, and do part over whole, element part over whole, element part over whole, and we get the percents. In this case, we're going to divide by molar mass. You'll see when we do that. And empirical formula by definition is the simplest formula ratio of elements in a compound, meaning it's all the way reduced. So reducing will be one step we do. Just like you do in a fraction, you reduce. Except this reduction step, we do it systematically the same way every time. We reduce by the, the lowest number in the formula. Let's take a look. Um, so that's one of our steps. So first step is actually to write your percents given to you. This is the opposite of percent, percent composition. Percent composition ends up, answers our percents. Empirical starts with percents. So if we can assume, if we have, a hundred, if we have these percents, we assume that percents are always out of 100%, then we can assume we're out of 100 grams. And essentially, 
we just write the numbers of the percents with a G instead of a percent sign. That's it. Then, whenever we've used a G value, we've normally converted to moles. So that should you know, automatically compute that, oh yeah, okay, we, we should convert to moles if we have gram values. Also, when you convert to moles, you end up dividing by the molar mass. Take a look. For each element. In percent composition, remember we took the subscript and multiplied by the molar mass of each element. Now we're going to take the mass hypothetical divided by the molar mass. Same thing. It's just converting to moles. And we get moles of each. Go back and look at it if you need to. Pause and, pause and go look back. Then we have to do that reducing step. So step four is reduce. Step one, write the percentage as a gram. Step two, or step one, write the percentages. Step two, write percentage as gram. Step three, convert the grams to moles, which is the opposite of percent composition. Step four is reduce. Reduce by dividing by the smallest whole number, or the smallest number of moles given. 3.33 is the smallest number, so we divide by all of those by 3.33. And step five, use the, the answers you got, the whole number ratios, to put into a formula. CH2O. Now, the one kicker is these numbers aren't exactly 1 and 2 and 1. It ends up being that they are, well, the 1's are the, exactly that, but the 2 is like 2 and some, some change. You round, by rule, to the nearest whole, half, quarter, or third, which means you'll either be 0 .00, 0 .00, you round it to 0 .00, 0 .25, 0 .33, 0 .5, 0 .67, or 0 .75, every time. That's what you round it to, to the nearest one of those that you get when you do the fourth reduced step. All right, and here are the steps from the board. Write the percent, percent to grams, convert to mole, which is divided by the molar mass, reduce, round to the nearest whole, half, one third, or one quarter, which can be 0.67 and 0.75, um, and then you write the formula. Now there's one other step you'll see in the slides. And that's in the next problem. So, percents as grams. Go back and watch this again if you need to. Convert to moles. Divide by the lowest. 3.406. This is where the first place we round. We do not round. We use the biggest numbers we can write. Most numbers we can write um, each time, even if we were to go three decimal places, until this step. In this case, we round when we get to the reduced step. We got reduced it by the lowest number. Get these numbers. We round to the nearest one-third for hydrogen. Plug it in. Can't have decimals. How do you get rid of a third? By multiplying by three. So three C's, four H's, three O's, and there you go. Work on the empirical formula worksheet that's also attached. Go dogs.